Welcome to Greenhorn Linux. Linux for Greenhorns. On this episode of Greenhorn Linux, Adam goes over and explains the dreaded terminal. Terminal? I thought Linux was supposed to be easy to use. Why would I ever want to use a terminal? So before people start freaking out on me, just hear me out. Linux is at the point now where I believe you could do everything through a graphical user interface, also known as a GUI. However, some of the real advantages of Linux is actually using the terminal. The terminal can be a very, very powerful tool. It's my goal through this introduction just to see if you could use the terminal to make things a lot more efficient on your Linux system. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to do this. Um, It's just nice to have that knowledge just to see if this would be something that could enhance your workflow in the future. So, since this is an introduction to the terminal, I'll show you where you can actually launch your terminal. Click your dash home and just type in terminal. And then you can click it and this little terminal thing with the blinking uh, cursor will pop up. Now you may notice on my system, the theme looks kind of Mac-ish. I have set this up on purpose. Uh, I actually have this set up with my awesome Windows Manager and I just left this uh, as, as the default in the Unity desktop environment. So it's not a Mac, don't worry. Um, This is definitely Ubuntu 12.04. Okay, so this is your terminal. Um, So we'll start with uh, what this all means. So the AB here at this AB Lin desktop. Okay, so the AB is my username and the uh, AB uh, dash Lin dot desktop is actually what I have named or the host name of my particular computer. And the tilde basically means what working directory you're in. Tilde actually means home. So if I say uh, change directory to root, for example, uh, that now you can see where I'm in root. Uh, and then if I go to change directory bin, uh, you can see now where I'm at root bin. So this basically just tells you the location, and I'm going to change my directory back to the home directory. Okay, a lot of people don't know this, but any application can be run in the terminal. Now, there's usually two different variations of applications. Uh, One is terminal-based only. So, for example, the list command, uh, ls, um, is geared for the terminal only. So, uh, I cannot run this program. There is no graphical user interface for this program. Also, the change directory command is also a terminal-only type command. Now, something that is not a... uh, uh, terminal uh, only is, uh, for example, your web browser, Firefox. So you could just type in Firefox and Firefox will immediately start up. Now, it's not outputting anything at the moment because there's no errors, but if there were errors, they would be outputted into the terminal. And then you could select that error, put that into Google, and see what other people are saying about those particular errors. Now, it's important to note that the terminal uh, is tied to this Firefox process. So what that means is if I close this terminal, Firefox will immediately shut down. So whenever you start an application this way, uh, the application is actually tied to the terminal. So if I just close the terminal, Firefox will immediately close. Now I'm actually going to launch the software center in uh, the terminal just so I can show you some of the output that you may see. So this is basically telling uh, the user a whole bunch of information. I have no idea exactly what this means, but um, if there was an error or if all of a sudden this system crashed, I could grab the last output and uh, just select it, right click and say copy. And then I could just paste this into Google and this would help me troubleshoot any issues with this particular application. So if someone is helping you troubleshoot an issue, uh, more than likely they're going to tell you how to do that via a command line. And the reason for that is uh, twofold. One, it takes a lot of variables out of your potential setup that differs from whoever's giving you the instructions. And two, a lot of people feel it's much, much quicker. So let me just give you a quick scenario of, of why people give you terminal commands versus other ways of doing things. And there's always many ways to do things. It's just that a lot of people feel that this is much quicker. Let me just give you a scenario. Um, let's say that someone uh, is trying to instruct you on how to copy a particular file. Now you have to start up your uh, um, your file manager, which in our case is Nautilus. But what happens if you're not running Nautilus? What happens if you're running Thunar? So they have to explain. Okay, you need to launch Nautilus or Thunar or any type file manager. Then you need to go to, for example, your temp folder here, and then you need to find this xorg.config file. You need to copy that, and then you're going to go back and navigate into your games folder, and then you can control v that. As you can see, that takes a while to explain, and it's pretty wordy. So for this example, I'm just going to delete this out, and I'm going to show you what someone would tell you in a terminal command line. 
Okay, so now you can see um, that file is empty. I deleted that out, and I'm going to show you how to do that in uh, the terminal, which is much, much quicker and a lot less wordy and takes away a lot of variables. So it's just going to be copy, and uh, that was in my temp folder, and that was the xorg.config, and then I am just going to copy that into the games folder and hit enter, and as you can see, it just popped up. Uh, that command was a lot quicker than me trying to explain uh, 20 different steps on how to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to go over how the terminal actually works. So uh, the first step is to find your base command. So this might be a graphical user interface as we already talked about with Firefox, or it could be a terminal based um, uh, application only. So uh, right now I'm just going to concentrate on what is called the list command. Basically it lists everything in your directory that you are in. So for example, if you type in ls, uh, these are all the folders um, in my home directory. So I can prove this by opening up Nautilus, and you can see this matches identically to uh, what is being outputted on my terminal. Now the ls command actually has a whole bunch of other options that can be triggered to give different effects, and these are called switches. So how in the world do you find switches? Well, the best place to start is using the man command. So uh, if you type in man and then ls, um, this brings up a manual of uh, how to use the ls command. So uh, you can see here, uh, basically use ls an option, or also known as a switch, and then the file or directory that you would like to list. And you can see uh, if I type in ls space dash a, do not ignore entry starting with a dot, and a dot means a hidden file. Um, if you see something called ls dash big r, this means recursive, list all subdirectories recursively. So I'm just going to hit Q to quit all of this, and let's try this. So I'm going to do ls negative a, and you can see I have a whole bunch of dot files. Now I don't see this over here, what's going on? Well that's because by default Nautilus is hiding these. So you can you you can show hidden files two ways. You can hit Control H, which now I will see all of my hidden files. Or you can actually go up to here under View and say uh, Show Hidden Files. Now it's also important to note that you can put many uh, switches together. So for example, ls negative a big R will show all hidden files and it'll search, it'll scan all subfolders. So this is going to take a second and you're going to see a lot of output uh, via the terminal. But this is how you get um, command type applications to do what you want. You're going to do those through switches. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit more about the, the man command or manual command. Um, basically, every application has a manual associated with it. So all you have to do is start with the base command, which is in this case man, and then whatever application you're looking so for. So let's try Firefox. Okay, you can see this is everything about Firefox. Yes, Firefox is a graphical user interface type program, but it still has a a manual associated with it. Let's say you want to learn more about the copy command, so man copy. And then here you can see that this is how you would use it. You would use cp space and then you would put an option or a switch. And then you would put another space and then you could put the source that you want to copy and then you would put another space and then you would put the directory that you want to copy into. So if you ever have a question of how a program may work, um, you can just type in man and then you can type in for example, uh, the application you want potentially more in, uh, information on. And you can even see it comes with Audacity, which is my, uh, for audio recording, um, even has a man page. Let's try manning the man. So check this out, man, man. So this is the manual about how to use the man command, which is uh, pretty crazy. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to quickly uh, open up applications. Uh, with a particular file using the terminal. Um, so uh, just for this example, I'm going to open up my Nautilus uh, or my file manager and I'm just going to quickly create an empty file. We'll just call this test.txt. You can try this exercise along with me. Uh, then just double click on it um, and it should open up uh, uh, gedit, which is the uh, text file editor under Ubuntu. And this is a quick test and we're just going to save it okay so now what we have to do is we have to navigate to that 
particular file. So uh, we should be there because I just put it in my home directory. So if you just type ls, we should see uh, the test.txt file, which we do is right there. And then now we can say, uh, what do we want to open it with? Well, remember I said it was gedit is our text editor. And then I want to open up the tst or te uh, test.txt file. And then when I click enter, um, I just opened this file via the command line. Now you can do this with any type of file. So for example, I just quickly navigated to my music, uh, the Rolling Stones of the past, and I'm just going to again issue the ls command just so I know what I'm dealing with. And for example, uh, Audacious, which is not installed by uh, default for um, most Ubuntu installs. This is a an, an audio program that I actually installed. So I'm going to launch Audacious, and I want to launch uh, the only MP3 in here. And then I just click Enter, and boom, it immediately launches and starts. Now again, I realize you don't have to do all this in the terminal, and honestly, I feel that a lot of this stuff that I've been showing you could be much faster uh, just by navigating through your file manager and then just right clicking on the uh, actual file you want to launch and then selecting your application that way. So for example, same thing, I'm just navigating through here and then now I can just right click and say open with and choose the program. So uh, again, I'm not saying this is necessarily faster. I'm just showing you, especially if you need help with stuff, why people may tell you uh, to use the terminal to do a lot of this stuff. If you do like the terminal, uh, in fact, I have gotten used to some of the terminal stuff and I do find some things much faster with it. Uh, let me show you how you can speed up the process even more. So uh, one of the big things is the uh, tab key. This is uh, very, very important. This will speed up your thing, uh, your process a lot. So for example, I'm just going to issue the list command again. Let's say I want to change directory to data. So I can say change D and then I can hit tab and it automatically completes changing to my data directory because that is the only thing that starts with a lowercase d. Now remember, uh, uppercase and lowercase matter. So for example, if I hit capital D and then I hit the tab key, I've got desktop and I've got download. So if I hit it once, nothing happens. If I hit it twice, then what will happen is it will tell you all the possibilities. So now I see I've only got two possibilities. I can continue with the command. And now if I do DE and hit tab, it'll automatically complete. So automatic completion is very, very, very fast. So let's say I wanted to quickly navigate to my Rolling Stones folder. I could do change directory and then I'm going to do D. It's going to go to data. Uh, I'm going to just type M and then tab and then I'm going to type uh, T. Oh, I have a lot of T's in there. So I'm going to hit it again and then I'm going to see, oh, the. So I can type in the and I know I have a couple of those. So I'm going to type R. I've only got one of those. So I just hit tab and then I hit enter and then now I can see everything uh, in the Rolling Stones directory and it was pretty quick by using the tab key. So I'm just going to clear this real quick. I'm just going to use the clear command. You can, should also note that this will also work for applications. So I'm just going to type in my audio programs. Now I have um, three of them. I have Audacious, Audacity, and uh, odd tool. Um, so you can see that um, uh, auto completion for uh, certain applications automatically work as well. So even Firefox, uh, you know, I just type in FI and then I hit tab. Oh, I've got a whole bunch of those, but if I type in FIR, it'll automatically complete. Another very helpful tip is using the up arrow key and down arrow key once you don't have anything typed. So for example, if I just hit the up arrow key, what it's going to do is it's going to, if I keep hitting it, it's listing through, um, uh, it starts with the last command I used, and then it just keeps going up the list. So you can see all of the commands that I have used uh, in the past. And so the up arrow key will go to the next last used one and then to the next last used one. And then the down arrow key just moves back through that list. So if you keep doing a particular command uh, over and over again, um, just by hitting uh, your history or your up arrow or down arrow key, um, you can cycle through that very, very quickly. And that's a very nice feature. Now you can copy and paste in your terminal. Um, you would think it would just be uh, control V and control C respectively if you're used to the uh, commands, uh, the keyboard shortcuts from Windows. Uh, however, in the terminal you actually have to do shift control C, shift control V. So for example, let's say um, I wanted to quickly change 
uh, to my uh, the Rolling Stones already again, but see for example, like right now if I type in pwd uh, print working directory, you can see I'm actually in my home folder. And let's say I just wanted to quickly change back to uh, the Rolling Stones um, uh, uh, directory, uh, so I can highlight that. I can hit Control Shift C, put my cursor down here, hit Control Shift. V. Um, you can also do it by just highlighting it and then just right clicking, copy, paste. Um, but I find the keyboard shortcuts faster. And then what I can do is now my cursor is way uh, at the at the end of all this. Another um, great uh, keyboard shortcut is uh, Control A, which will bring you to the front. And then I can just say CD space enter. And then I just went back to that directory very quickly. Or uh, the another nice um, feature is uh, so if you hit Control A, you'll go to the beginning, and then if you hit Control E, you will go to the end of the line. So if you need to quickly uh, go to the beginning or front of the uh, uh, command that you're about to issue, uh, that's a very very quick way to do that. And there are a ton more uh, keyboard shortcuts. Um, I'll try to find a good uh, web page and, and and link that on my site that explains all these other keyboard shortcuts. Uh, another way to find some of these keyboard shortcuts that will help speed up your uh, terminal um, uh, using the terminal. Uh, is if you go up to edit and you go to keyboard shortcuts, uh, it'll list everything um, that you uh, could do. It, it doesn't list all of them, like for example, Control A and Control E. Um, it doesn't list that for some reason, um, but I'll try the link that that shows some uh, really good uh, keyboard shortcut commands for terminal. Okay, now let's put something a little bit more complex and let's put this all together to show you some of the power of the terminal. Uh, this is kind of the, the baseline to start writing scripts, how to output the files, and do a lot more complex things with your system if you so desire and or choose. So uh, you can see I've got uh, my Nautilus home folder, I'm just in my home directory, and I have my terminal. So what I'm going to do is I want to issue the list command, and I want to do it uh, recursively. Uh, I don't want to show all hidden files, so I'm just going to put the switch the uh, uh, dash big R. And then I'm going to use the greater than sign and what this does is this will output it to a particular file and um, there's also uh, something called a pipe which will allow you to string this together with another uh, particular command but for this example we're just going to use the uh, greater than sign and I'm going to create a text file called my list .txt. and what this is going to do is this is going to uh, take this uh, list output it into a text file and I click enter and then uh, you can see it immediately created uh, this my list.txt file a plain text document uh, in my home folder because that's where I told it to go and now when I double click it and I open it up in uh, gedit uh, you can see that I oops let me make this nice and big um, you can see that I have a list of all of my folders and everything that's within my folders. So uh, just like that, um, I have uh, a, a list of, of everything, which is, is pretty cool. And this is just a, a very, very simple uh, uh, example of some of the power uh, and flexibility that you can get from using the terminal. Well, hopefully this didn't scare you away from the terminal. Hopefully this piqued your interest with the terminal. My personal opinion is it's really not that scary. Uh, it can definitely enhance your Linux experience. Again, you may not necessarily need to use it, uh, especially on a regular basis. You can probably get away with just using a graphical user interface. Uh, but if you do need to troubleshoot some issues, more than likely people will tell you the commands. And it's a good idea to understand at least some of the more basic ones and see what is going on and what people are telling you to do. As always, thanks for watching. And be sure to check out my website, greenhornlinux.com. Catch you later.